All right, this video is about factoring identities. So, <clears throat> first thing I want to start off with is remembering algebra. The things that you did in algebra related to factoring, you're going to use those same skills in with trig identities. So let's just baby steps backwards here. If you look at this expression, you want to look for the greatest common factor. What's the greatest common factor between these two terms? Hopefully you recognize that it's a 3. If I factor out a 3 out of both terms, that's the same as dividing out a 3. That becomes a 1, so it's just 1x. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So that is my term factor. Try this one. What's the greatest common factor between 4x plus 2? Hopefully you see that it's a 2. I divide each term by 2, and that becomes 2x plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. A lot of people forget about the plus 1, but it's important that you do that for placeholding. You have to have that, especially when you get to trig identities, you have to have that placeholder. All right? Look at this one. I'm hoping that you remember this is a difference of squares. That is a square, where both terms are perfect squares, okay? If you don't recall that, it is. If both terms are perfect square and there's a minus sign right here in the middle, then you can factor it with the square root. So square root of x squared is x and x. Square root of 4 is 2. So you see I put the square root of 4 on both ends, square root of x on the front ends. And because there's a minus between them, I can put a plus and a minus. You need to get to where you recognize that. If both terms are perfect squares, it's called a difference of squares as long as the middle is a subtraction. Here is a trinomial. Remember factoring trinomials. Hopefully you do. Miffed arm, box method, whatever method you were taught and you're comfortable with, you need to be able to use that efficiently. Miffed arm, if I do miffed arm, first term times last, give me one. Two terms that multiply to give me one, but add to give me a two, which is my B is a one and a one. Divide by A, put your X's in the bottom, and you read them up. So I have X plus 1, X plus 1. So what I have here is X plus 1 squared, right? So that's a squared binomial is what we call that, squared binomial. So these are all factoring skills that you've learned from Algebra 1 on that you will need to use as we do these factoring identities, okay? Let's try this one. Number one, cosine squared plus, plus cosine squared times cotangent squared. So think greatest common factor. What is my greatest common factor between these two? Do you see the cosine squared? They're in common. So I'm going to factor out cosine squared. And remember, when you factor it out, you're essentially dividing, right? So what happens to my first term here is it becomes a 1. Not 0, it becomes 1. Plus... This will cancel out, and what's left of my second term is cotangent squared of x. Now, 1 plus cotangent squared of x. You may not remember this, but we did some trig identities before, and this will be on your cheat sheet, so it will be handy, <clears throat> where we said that 1 plus cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x. I don't expect you to remember that. That will be on your identity sheet. But anytime you get something like this, 1 plus something squared, check your identity sheet because you should be able to find something simpler to replace it with. So I'm going to replace this whole expression here with x, cosecant squared of x. So I have cosine squared of x times cosecant squared of x. All right. Well, let's keep breaking this down. Remember, replace with sines and cosines when you can. So I'm going to leave cosine as it is. Cosecant, however, I know is the reciprocal of sine. So I'm going to write that. Well, if I multiply that, I get cosine squared of x over the sine squared of x. Well, cosine over sine, you should know this identity, is cotangent. Since both of these are squared, it just means it's cotangent squared of x. And I have factored this and reduced it down to something much simpler. <clears throat> All right, so example two here. Cosecant squared of x minus 1 over cosecant x minus 1. Well, you have expression with a minus sign, so I would encourage you to look for squares. Is this term squared? Yes. 
is one a perfect square? Hopefully you know that it is a perfect square. So that means it's a difference of squares. All right, and I can factor it that method I showed you before. All right, so cosecant squared is going to be cosecant of x. And then 1 and 1. 1 is a plus and 1 is a minus. Okay. And on the bottom, I have cosecant x minus 1. And what you should see is that these terms are identical, and I can cancel them out. And my answer then is just the cosecant of x plus 1. Now, there's not going to be an identity on the card for this because it's not cosecant squared. If it was cosecant squared, there might be something there for you. But if it's just cosecant to the first power, you're good to go. That's as far as you can take it. All right, you have simplified the expression by factoring. Let's try another one. <clears throat> Two terms separated by the minus sign. Check to see if they are perfect squares. Is 4 a perfect square? Yes. So cosecant to the fourth power is the same as cosecant squared times cosecant squared. I hope you realize that. Cotangent to the fourth is the same as cotangent squared times cotangent squared. So this, again, is another difference of squares. So what I'm going to do is factor it. Cosecant squared of x minus cotangent squared of x. Cosecant squared of x plus cotangent squared of x. Okay, difference of squares again. Now, since all these are squared, I will look at your cheat sheet and look for something to replace it with. All right? On the cheat sheet, I'm just going to scribble down here, you should find that there is an identity that says 1 plus the cotangent squared of x equals the cosecant squared of x. Okay, that's not identical to either one of these. However, could I make it look like one of them? Well, if I take that cosecant or the cotangent squared and I subtract it from both sides, it would look like this, wouldn't it? You would have this. You would have cosecant squared of x minus the cotangent squared of x. And isn't that what I have right here in parentheses? Sure enough, it is. So I can replace that mess with a simple 1. So it's 1 times the cosecant squared of x plus the cotangent squared of x. Now, back to this identity. There's nothing I can do to rearrange it so it looks like this. Cosecant squared plus cotangent squared. It's not going to work. So that's just going to be my final answer. There's nothing more I can do to simplify this guy. All right. Example four. Sine to the fourth of x minus two sine squared of x plus one. All right. Well, that might feel a little bit overwhelming, but let's think of it like this. What if this was x to the fourth minus two x squared plus one? All right, well, <clears throat> I'm hoping that you would be able to factor this a little more clearly. Remember MIFDARM or box method, whatever you want to use. What two terms multiply to give you positive 1 but are going to add to give you negative 2? That would be a negative 1 and a negative 1. And then in the first part, I got to have two terms that are going to multiply to give me x to the fourth. So I look here and it's x squared times x squared. It's not, not quite a difference of squares, but it, it's similar. What you really have is x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1. So <clears throat> going back to my original problem, notice it's not just x to the fourth. It's sine to the fourth of x. So I'm going to replace this with sine. All right. So in my problems here, it's going to be the sine squared of x. All right, see what I did? I just replaced it back to the original. Now these are the same, so I can write it like this. Squared. Now again, this may not look familiar, but since sine is squared, go to your little card and make sure you can't replace it with something. Hopefully, you go right to this one. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. That's your Pythagorean identity. Well, if I subtract... 1 from both sides.
I'm going to get this. Right? Well, I want sine squared minus 1, so I'm going to subtract the cosine squared from both sides. Right? That'll go away here. What I have left is the sine squared of x minus 1 equals negative cosine squared of x. All right? So I'm going to replace this expression with this one ratio. So what I have is negative cosine squared of x squared. Now, square it if you can. Remember this is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Cosine squared squared is going to be cosine to the fourth. So I have simplified that expression to one trig ratio using factoring. That was my goal. All right, for class, I want you to try this one on your own. Start with greatest common factor and see what you can do to get it as simple as possible. All right, and you should be able to put your answer in the whisk if you do it right. All right, good luck and see you in class.